Mine was a standard tan with air conditioning. There was holes all over the floor of it. Cost me 15 quid, that car new. Still drive it. <laughs> Well, I remember travelling up to Spencer's Club, which sadly is closed down now up in uh, Stirling, but I used to go up and I practiced with, uh, with John Higgins up there when he turned pro, and he's the same lad today as he was back then. Yeah, absolutely. He's a good lad, is John. You know what, he's never really changed, has he? He's uh, just one of the boys. I think that's helped him to be like that. I don't know too many people has got a bad word to say about him. In fact, nobody has. He's doing a bit for the game of snooker as well, along with his manager, Pat Mooney, the World Series. They've played in Russia, Poland, and um, they're getting terrific crowds. Bring a few of the top players along with them, involve a few of the local players. Nice to see that, spreading the game around the world. In fact, Dennis, I can tell you, Ding won the last tournament, and... Um, was interviewed afterwards by John, no less. Oh, I'd like to uh, see that interview. That would have been a lot of fun, I would think. Yeah, I think it was a lot of fun. I think they also played in Germany and I had one of them in Jersey as well. It's not a bad part of the world to travel to. table than maybe he would have wanted. There's a big snooker following in China as we know, but uh, certainly in Europe the game is big now. So no reason why that World Series shouldn't flourish. Now, well, what has Dean got to offer? We know what a player he is. He's had to sit out a couple of frames where John has started to kill better and better. And I've seen him before in situations like this where he's not at the table much. His body language can tell you how he's feeling. He's only a young man still. He seems to have been around forever. He's just 21. So this is going to test him now that John's starting to play. Okay. Just the one red available to him. Well, there may be one in either corner pocket, but there's certainly one to the right corner, and it looks as if one will go into the left corner also. He's looked at both of them, <coughs> he's just deciding which is the better one to get nicely on the black. So he might be able to get across to play the black into the same pocket. Little screw shot. 17. Seven. Just a gentle little cannon here. Yeah. 
Asking for the cue ball to be clean. We've seen one or two bad contacts. These are the shots, little roll shots, tend to be the ones. There's re referee Jan Verhaas. I think very senior referee now in this game. He's one of the very best, I always think. Twenty-five. So a chance for a very big break here. At the moment, he just wants to get. More than uh, 75, I guess, just to make it absolutely secure this frame. But there is a chance for a big break. Well, it's not a bad start, is it? Four reds, four blacks. So, 32. It's not quite straight enough on this red. He's got to be a little careful. Beautiful. 33. One of the players that is in the illustrious group of players that's compiled a maximum break. He made one in the 2007 Masters. Won't be thinking about that just yet because they're very awkwardly placed. He just wants to get a frame on the board. Yeah, the only other 147 at that time in that the Masters was oh, Kirk Stevens all those years ago, wasn't it, with the white suit. I'm talking about Kirk, he's just won the Canadian Amateur Snooker Championship. <coughs> Probably still wearing that white suit as well. Great character, Kirk was. A favourite with the ladies was Kirk. 48. He's certainly going to be playing on the black. 49. Now he's got reds on either side of uh, the pack here that go. When he plays a screw shot, He's got a huge area to go in. Reds to the same pocket. So no problem at all. 56. It's always difficult because he hasn't won a frame yet of the two we've played, so he, he knows that the maximum is a possibility, but he must get over the line in the frame. That would be his priority, then he can really concentrate on it. Still all those points left on the table. Fifty-seven. Might have to play for the difficult red this time. He doesn't want to. Now he's going to force it around. Maybe just gone just a touch further than he would have liked. There's a couple of reds there that could be a possible plant as well, but he, well, they're not far off a plant, but he played for the one to the left of the two. And I'm just wondering if he'll change his plan here. There's a bit of distance between the two reds. So he's playing the single red. Sixty-five. Well, he might have to play on it this time, the red along the cushion, but I don't think he really wants to. Yeah, what sort of shot has he got? I don't think he's absolutely perfect to get onto the black, so if he plays a screw shot, he could maybe get there. Now, when is he going to play for that tricky little one along the cushion? Might be now. 
No, the frame is safe at the moment. Uh, has he gone far enough this time? And this might be a little bit short. I think he's got now. He's going to have to. Well, there's only two shots. He can screw back and leave a very difficult black, or he can try and just power the white through the reds. That's what he's attempting. Now he needs a lot of topspin to make sure he follows through. Well, he could glance off it. He's so played it well. well. That was a beautiful shot, Dennis. Well, I agree with you. I thought he was going to power it through. He played it with finesse. This was a really difficult shot because he knew the cue ball was coming quite close to the black. Well, there is a prize of £25,000 for a maximum break, and of course there's 5000 for the highest break, so at the moment he's attempting to get himself £30,000. And at this stage, when you're sitting in that chair, you want the player to make the maximum. He's had the cue ball clean now, he's worried about getting a bad contact again. These are the shots that can go wrong. Now, that's okay, okay because with the two reds potable to the left corner, anywhere up the table means he's got a shot. He's got two choices here of reds, depending on which angle he gets. Oh, that's a beautiful shot again. 96. Ninety-seven. Is now the time to play for the tough red along the cushion? I think so. He's got a good angle. He might not get a better one if he tries to go around, but it looks as if he's attempting to play for the one near the pink. Has he gone far enough? Yes, he's played it well. That was a, another great shot. I think most players would have played on him the red. So maybe he sees the last red as the easier one of the two, because all he had to do was dropping behind it, but the fact is he played it very nicely. High was the key with the cue ball, high up the table. Yeah, the blue's just in a slightly awkward position. He's got a few balls to pot before he gets to trying to get onto the yellow. 105. That's pretty good, as long as he doesn't leave this red straight. He'll give himself a terrific opportunity. Do. He's got the angle now. If this goes in, he's on the black, but he doesn't want to be straight on the black. 112. Well done. 113. Key shot coming up. As I said, the blue slightly in the way. If he plays down the normal way, that's where he'd want to get the white somewhere near the circle. But he's got to get it absolutely spot on. Now, is he going to come across the table, leave the yellow to the other corner? That'll take the blue out of the equation. No, he's played into that position and he's played it well. But just one more thing to worry about here. 20. Hopefully the blue won't get in the way when he plays on the green because really he wants the cue ball somewhere where the blue is now. So he's got to be careful of that. He mustn't snooker himself on the green behind the blue. There's John. As Dennis said, really hoping he makes it. Just one more good shot, I think. 122. Well done. Oh, he's overscrewed it. 125. That's a little bit of tension. Oh, he just had to bring it back a few inches. Now he's got to play quite a good shot, but he could still do it. He's got to go around a couple of cushions, though, I feel. Instead of being straightforward, he's going to have to play probably around the angles there to get somewhere near the end of the line. Just with a, He's got to be very precise with this.
29. Still a bit to do yet though. John smiling. <laughs> That is okay, he's not gone too far, and it is a natural to get through onto the black. <laughs> I don't blame him for walking away and having a little sip of water, just to compose himself. Well played thing. Fantastic. That well done, finishes up. It wasn't a bad little shot to nothing in its own right. Didn't leave too much on if he had have missed the red. Good angle now, of course. Gonna play a little cannon up above onto the loose red. And this really was a very, very good 147. Lots of times we see 147 breaks made these days, and the balls are already split up through a number of safety shots. But you've got 10 reds still part of the triangle there at the back, so this has uh, got to be made. At some stage these balls have got to be broken up. Already we're seeing close cue ball control of the highest quality from Dink. Always keeping the right angles and as close as possible to those object balls. And here comes the shot uh, that changes the, the face of this particular frame. Ding was a bit unhappy with the... Uh, he just fractionally underhit that white uh, in putting the black. And now he's got to run into the reds. And this is the shot really where it all goes right for him. He's got to power through these reds, lots of top spin. He didn't bash at it. That the same? And obviously in the, in the commentary box they were saying well, he's left it a bit short. But he was worried about the ball going to the side cushion. So fantastic the amount of top spin and how it threaded its way through those balls, John. Yeah, this is a pretty good shot as well. I mean, no bridging over, of course. This could obviously have gone all wrong. Yeah, I uh, mean, if this, isn't, this is not a shot that you'd be in a hurry to play using the spider. You can easily knock the cue ball offline using this implement. And of course, he was feeling pretty good about his game anyway, 4-2 in front. It does help a little bit if you're in front. Still a very good shot, that though. Very good. And a lot of players wouldn't be happy having to play that one. Still some work to be done with the Reds. As you see, they're crowded, they're, they're in the way of each other, blocking each other's pass from the pocket. So, accurate position required from red to black. 24. Not just a case of getting on the black anywhere. Twenty-five. Making a break like this, of course, Steve. You know, in the early stages, you've got quite a few more options without having so many reds. I mean, he'd be, he'd be thinking probably what put the shots ahead while he's making this. Well, yes, obviously, when there are many reds on the table, you are trying to give yourself on occasions as many red options as possible uh, that you can get back to the black and as you can see the way he's played that black uh, he screwed back across the face of the red giving himself a chance of this red to cut into the middle pocket or a possible red into the left corner I mean this is from Dazzle, it's not the one he's played on is it? He's played on the other red uh, of those three that you can see beneath the one he's taking now, the outside right one of that but you know he's given himself the option if he wasn't on one he was on this one and once again that was well controlled. Well this is where the 147 break has been um, 
dissected, so to speak. I mean, once upon a time, uh, it, it was a, a novelty when we got one. Now players are understanding how to go about position and keep the cue ball in play. Uh, and the 147 has become easier. Um, not the mystery it once was. You just got to keep that cue ball with as many chances as possible of being on a red. Obviously, on occasions, you've got to play on a specific red, and he deliberately played to cannon that red and leave himself on the one nearest the black. But once again, the balls are still crowded, and there's got to be work to be done in colliding with balls. And that's the other thing, when you make those breaks, he's played that lovely little cannon, but of course he's knocked another one into a cluster, so sometimes playing the right shot can end up being the wrong shot, can not it? With a view to the 147 break. Obviously the first criteria in any, any frame is to get over the line, the winning line, but the best ball really to, to get the points on the ball is the black, it's the closest to the reds, so players do concentrate on making breaks around the black spot when they're in practice, so these shots become natural to you. Now this is going to help, he pots this red, screws across the face of the black, opens two more reds up into the right hand corner. Keep your eye on those two reds that are together now, touching each other just to the left, to the right of the pink spot. They become quite critical later in the break. Noticeable, of course, a couple of shots ago there, Steve, he decided to go in the pack, he thought it was the right time to promote a few balls into better positions. Sometimes you just can't land on a ball, you do have to move a few of them about. Just, just got there with that one. Any lower than, than that, he would have been potting the red and going away from the black. And now there's less reds on the table. Positional play becomes more critical. Getting to the stage where you must guarantee to get the right side, probably of just the one ball you're playing on, not a selection of reds. Just had enough room to get sir. past that. Now there was a possibility of pot potting this red and colliding with those two reds to the right of the pink spot, but that wouldn't necessarily guarantee position on a red to get back to the black. And by now he's probably thinking of the 147 break. £25,000 and obviously £10,000 for the highest break of the tournament. He's guaranteed more or less to be over the line in this frame. Pot, pot in this red of course opens up the one that was closest to it. And that's made it a little better, but as you say, Steve, those two reds together are, are always looking like they're going to be the problem. The player himself will be looking at that and saying, well, I'll get to you later. But obviously, if, if at any stage Dean does get the perfect angle to pop the black, stun into those reds and leave himself guaranteed position on a red to get back for the black, he would be taking it on. But as we see... 73. It doesn't necessarily pan out this way. It would have been nice if he perhaps could have screwed into the red, the two reds off of this black, but he's just gone a fraction too far, and now it's getting to the stage where he must guarantee to get the right side of a red to get back to the black. And he's guaranteeing to do that very well, and looks completely in control, doesn't he? I mean, look, we've seen players who have never made a 147 break on television before uh, balk at their chance and start to get a bit jittery. But Ding certainly didn't look that. Another example there, of course, of leaving yourself options. Could have played the one in the centre pocket, or this one. Decided that was the angle he wanted to be on. And now, of course, playing this one, you've got to make sure you're staying high up the table, so that the two reds that are loose, you can pop them, and once again, get back towards the black. And he's more or less now, with this positional shot, sacrificed the chance of splitting these two reds apart and getting positioned on another red. He's now, at some stage, Got to play the split and hope he's on one of those two reds, or perhaps choose something else. He's queuing so well, and we've talked about uh, his queue action in the, well, the section of the, of the snook we did with uh, Terry Griffiths and Stephen Hendry on what Ding's strengths are. Um, we were talking about the fact that he, he doesn't seem to have anything special in his cue action. It's just a very simple backwards and forwards a couple of times, gets on with it, and just delivers the cue in a straight line. It's a very economical cue action. I think in most sports, and you know, simple is the best, and keep it as simple as possible. Well, here's where Ding makes the big decision not to split the reds up. This is a little bit tricky, actually, because he doesn't have to think about this one. He would have, could have been forgiven for trying to come into these two reds, but he decided to play what would, would turn out to be the much better option, as long as you're putting well. 
and can play under pressure when you want to make a 147 break on TV and pick up a few quid to take back to China. 96. He's come superbly on this as well. Gives himself the chance to pop the red screw back off the top cushion. Not just a soft screw back, hit it firm. is now free and once again what positional shot can I play here to leave myself at least guaranteed on one if not two so I'm going to look around the table see where he wants to finish and of course now the nerves and the butterflies will certainly be increasing because he knows this is a fantastic chance the red to the right of the table is the more difficult one to get good position on to get back on the black Gonna get up there a bit. He's a bit short of pace, just a fraction. I think it's one of those shots there, Steve, but he's just a little bit woody that he could have run past the pink and he's just played it a little bit on the shy side to guarantee that he didn't go up that far. This was a lot better shot than it looked. Uh, playing with side spin, uh, even a fraction of side spin and pace, sometimes you can misjudge them, but he put a nice bit of right hand side on that shot. Controlled right hand side. And now you can see where he's looking to leave the, the right angle to be on the red into the middle pocket to make an easy path back for the black. Just drop this red in, just drop, drop the black in and leave himself that nice angle to drop the red in to get back on the black. Now the one thing you don't want to be here John is straight on the black. This is not actually a gimme either is it? The red in the centre. You know you've got to make sure that you get this on an acute angle, blind pocket. You know the adrenaline's pumping at this moment, so as he played that with a little spin shot, didn't he? A lot of players would have dropped that in and left that the angle high there, but he decided to play down for this half ball off the black. I didn't quite get half ball on it, it was nearly more or less three quarters, but deep screw with a little bit of side. The cue ball zip away there. Absolutely superb. The crowd started to get very excited now as they realise not just the fact that Bing's in with a chance, but that he looks like he's going to make it. You can sense when a player looks in control and the way he cleared these colours up. Never in doubt really in my mind. So many players we've seen start to twitch, twitch a little bit on the shot, start to under hit a shot, over hit a positional shot and leave himself the wrong side of perhaps the blue in this situation just because of the adrenaline and the nerves. But Bing just looked like he was just down the club. Nice the pink actually was uh, closer to the blue for this shot. So nice to drop the blue in, get the other side of the pink for the middle pocket. And of course trying to guard against the player's ultimate nightmare, Steve. We did see it a few years ago with Ken Doherty when he could have won an £88,000 sports car. Don't remind us. Do not miss the black because that would be a horror show. Perfect screw shot. Take a deep breath, stand back, do the same routine and knock it in the pocket and make a maximum. Well played. Great, great stuff from Ding. He now goes through and he plays Peter Ebden in the round of six. Well, he's not happy with that, that shot, although he can still play on the black. Wrong angle on this. Um, can he hold for the black this time? I'm not so sure. But we'll try. Fifty-seven. He's changed his mind on this shot already once. 
It's worried if you can just get the right angle to get onto the black again. It's be an important shot if you're going to make a big break here. And he's hit it hard, especially. That's a, a very safe way of playing the shot. Finishing up there, while he's not close to red, he's absolutely guaranteed to be on a black playing that way. That was his thinking. Well, this is uh, a really marvellous chance. As good a chance as you'll ever see. He's taken the, the red out of the way on the left of the table. That would have been the most difficult one. Seventy-three. Now then. This is uh, getting to the point now where the break is not massively odds against. Oh, that's a terrible shot. So short of speed. He knows it as well. I don't know quite why that happened. That is a terrible shot. That's gone wrong. Well, don't think he can possibly get from red to black here. He's going to try. Well, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> He's on the black. That's some absolute miracle. It's going to be difficult now with uh, the red on the cushion. 97. Still a possibility. Well, that's a century break. Now, how's he going to turn this into a 147? That's the question. If you move the red out here. But this time, it's going to be very difficult for him to pop the black. The break really was on for a long time, but I don't think it's still on now. You have to cut this in somehow. It's going to be the most difficult shot you'll see. He's got the red in the middle pocket, so if this does go in, and it is an awfully difficult shot, then you'd fancy him to be on the, the final red. Very thin. Very, very thin. It's in. He's got it. He has got it. Well, he's on the red as well. How about that? One hundred and twelve. One hundred and twelve. Perfect. Just a question now of the what looks to be the most the, the one remaining shot that he's got to play here. This has been an extraordinary break. 
That is to get onto the yellow. Oh, that's a great shot. That is such a classy shot. 120. That's just making that look so easy, and yet I can tell you it was far from it. Well, now. What an opportunity this is. We made one two days ago, but it's still a special moment. And we've seen uh, such a high standard of play. These players are playing all the time, and it's helping them. The break goes to 122. This looks like the real thing to me. 122. There's no reason now why he shouldn't make a 147 break. What a match this has been, by the way. 80 plus in every frame, including a 98 from young James Carhill, 15 years of age. One hundred and twenty-nine. One hundred and thirty-four. Well, this has been brilliant stuff, and this is going to be uh, what a conclusion to this match with uh, the break going to one hundred and forty. And uh, this is it for a one-four-seven break. It's not something you see every day. Having said that, we've seen. Three in three days. Fantastic stuff. A one four seven break. How about that from Ding Jin Wee? What a way to finish a match, any match. And he's won by four frames to one. That's his second in three days. And my word, how about that? Must be the closest set of one four seven breaks we've seen in professional snooker. Two days between them. And Ding Jin Wee, he looked brilliant there. What a terrific match that was. And even a smile from the man from China who finishes off the match in only the way he knows. He had a bit of luck halfway through it. He, uh, a couple of times I don't quite know how he got on to a black, and then he cut a thin one in. Marvellous stuff, though. A 147 break, eh? And he gets a smattering of applause <laughs> from a, an audience that I don't say they're getting blase about 147.